Yeah, so welcome back and uh, let's pray and then we'll get started. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time together, Lord. We thank you for yet another opportunity to uh, to study your word, to observe your word, Lord, and to consider, Lord, your word, Master, so that we can apply it in our lives and, and see the fruit of it, Father God. We thank you. We thank you for giving us the privilege of handling your word. We thank you, Lord, that you've commissioned us, called us, Lord, uh, to be communicators, Lord, proclaimers, Lord, of your word, Father God. We thank you for this uh, privilege that you've given us, and we give you all the praise and glory even as we commit ourselves into your mighty hands. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so, um, yeah, in this class, uh, we are looking at some of the practical aspects of um, of preaching. Some we look, we've been looking at the 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 truth, the spiritual truth to be grounded in, which forms the basis for why we need to communicate what we are saying and what we can expect, and um, you know the whole aspect of fruitfulness and how we can expect that and how we can really um, you know be in anticipation of that. We also looked at you know sermon construction, and this is more of a guideline, right? Okay, so these are ways in which you can construct or write uh, your sermon outline and so on. Um, so today we look at um, some practical aspects of speaking. Okay, so this is not necessarily verse, chapter, and verse. Okay, so but this is practical wisdom. So that you and I can be good communicators of the truth. See, for example, if you look at the, um, if you look at the content, okay, the message of what we are sharing, it is a very important message, right? Whether it's about salvation, or if it is about something that for a believer to follow and to walk in, it's something which is life changing, right? Which is central to life. For example, the Lord Jesus, he was teaching his disciples. He taught them about communion. He, uh, he was actually teaching them about the cross. He said, you know, um, they will, you, you need to partake of my body and drink of my blood. What he was saying was uh, that you need to have this kind of communion with me. Right? Uh, my word and, you know, the whatever I, the sacrifice that I made on the cross, it needs to be part of you, is what, what you were saying. And we see that a lot of people, the disciples, they left Jesus after that. Okay. The Lord Jesus says, you know, he looks at his look, looks at the twelve and he asks them, you know, will you also go? Will you also leave? And then Peter answers and he says, Lord, to whom can we go? Where can we go? Because you have the words of uh, of eternal life. You have the words of eternal life. So, what are we communicating? These are words. Of eternal life. These are words that of power, these are words that of spirit and life, the way the Lord Jesus described it. John chapter 6 and verse 63, I say, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So it's a privilege to be able to communicate this word. Now, in communicating this, in sharing this, maybe in speaking it, all of us could be in varied levels of skill. Right? Some of us could be, you know, skilled communicators, and right? some of us need not be that skilled. But all of us can learn. All of us can learn some practical things, so that we can communicate, you know, communicate in a powerful way, communicate in a simple way, so that the hearer understands, the hearer receives it. Right? See, already there are many barriers when it comes to communication. What is it? The language can be a barrier. Now, the way we speak can be a bar barrier. Uh, the, our grammar and language, you know, the, uh, that can be a barrier. Cultural barriers could be there. You speak something, the other one, the person, you know, understands it differently because of culture and so on, right? So already there are many barriers and, and physical barriers like sound and volume and, and the way we speak and all that could be barriers. So why do we want to add one more barrier of lack of skill when it comes to communication? So when we improve that skill, right? Um, so when we when we learn intentionally, okay, here are some things that I can practically do. Here are some things that I should not do, right? So this will help me to communicate in a better way, in a clear way, in a skilled manner, so people are able to receive it, 
right? Okay, so, so that was the last thing we saw, right? Develop the ability to communicate God's word clearly, right? So today, let's look at some simple steps that we can take up in order to communicate the word of God clearly, or for us ourselves to be confident in speaking, right? So, you know, not everybody is confident while speaking in front of others. Right? So we are nervous. Okay, how? What will they think? What will they see? You know, do I look okay? Right? Do I sound okay? All those questions are there. So, for us to be confident, or and and the and the other big thing is, what do I say? Right? Will I remember what to say? And uh, you know, will this be received? You no, know, that's one big thing, right? Oh, I have this message, but I wonder what you know they will think, or I I don't have too many things to say. What will I actually say? So all these questions are there. So we'll look at some ways that will help us to speak confidently. Okay, the first thing is goes without a doubt. It is preparation. Okay, so when you prepare to speak, when you know, okay, this is what I have to speak. Here are, here are the three things that I want to share. Here are the four things that I want to speak. Okay, so when you prepare, that can that guarantees. Uh, a level of confidence in us. It's not like saying, you know, we're not saying, oh, I, I'm prepared well, so therefore I have the, you know, I'm, I'm all confident. You know, uh, you know the, the, it, it does give, preparation does give a level of confidence. But our dependence is not in that confidence. Yes or no? no? We're not depending on fully on that confidence. Okay, I'm prepared. I have everything. I know what to say, and I'm going to say it. No, we cannot depend fully on that because... When it comes to ministry, it's a spiritual thing, right? It, it has a spiritual aspect of it. I can be a fantastic communicator and not have impact. Why? Because I've not really relied on God. I'm not dependent on Him. I've not heard from Him, right? So, you know, it's, you know, God knows what is in the intent of man, what is in the heart of man, the need of man. So, therefore, we need to despite our preparation and skill, we need to lean on that. So we know that. That's a foundational thing, right? But <clears throat> having said that, we, when we prepare, we are confident. Okay. For example, you know, if you look at the, you know, some of these boxing matches, if you have seen, like, how many of you have seen Mike Tyson boxing? Anybody know? Okay, I'll use some other example. Usain Bolt running, we've seen, right? So Usain Bolt trains a whole year for the Olympics. Or maybe years, right? Four years, right? For the Olympics and for these races, many hours of physical training, hard training, strength training, right eating, you know, getting up early, uh, having adequate rest, training over and over again. And how long is that? Is that race that he runs? You know, he I think he runs hundred meters, or he used to run hundred meters and two hundred also, two hundred meters and four into hundred meters relay. Right from Jamaica to St. Bowl trains. 100 meters race. How long does it take for the race to get over? 10 seconds, less than. I think his be personal best was 9.58 seconds. I, I forget which race. I mean, whether it was, I don't think it was Olympics. Some race that he ran. I think it was in Oslo or someplace. Right? 9.58 seconds. That's it. 100 meters, the fastest. And how many hours did he put into prepare? Was it 9.58 seconds? <laughs> years, right? Years, years. And I'm sure that you know he might have felt like, hey, is it worth it at some point? You know, is it worth it? But he just kept going, preparing. So this, and people also say, you know, when it comes to these, some of the, uh, you know, very successful people we see in like sports, entertainment, and. Um, you know, music and all that, they put in hours of practice. And sometimes they say that it's like 10,000 hours of practice, which takes them to a whole new or another level of performance. 10,000 hours, right? So, so for us to prepare, right? yes, we need to pray, we need to be in the Word, but we can also practice in terms of skill, right? Um, so this preparation, preparing the content, preparing, and, and when we think of preparation, you know, as believers, 
we are talking about engaging with the Holy Spirit all the time. Like we're just asking God, God, you know, how do I start? Tell me. God, give some ideas, give some thoughts. Okay, this is what you say. And then you're looking at some of these thoughts that you're sharing, you know, point number one, point number two. Lord, how can I explain it better? And like what do I need to share in order to explain it better? That will help people understand. The Lord gives them thoughts. You know, you're preparing. And Lord, Lord, how do I finish this message, Lord? You know, how do I... How do I end this? What do you want me to do? Lord, give some thoughts. Holy Spirit, lead me. He's leading. And then, you know, that is preparation, right? So it's not just, okay, this passage, this thing, I do. This whole thing is preparation, right? So preparation gives us confidence in our abilities, confidence in our knowledge. Uh, pre preparation actually, you know, all this fear of how will it be received, what will be the outcome, all that is taken away. And also it gives us confidence too take action. So preparation is very important. The second thing is practice. Okay, so you practice it. Maybe, you know, when we start off initially, we need to understand or we need to be, we need to be comfortable in hearing our voice, right? I remember the first time, I think I shared it, I remember the first time I you know, went in front of a class and spoke. First of all, physically it looked different because I'm so used to sitting at the back of the class, looking only at the teacher, right? And all the students back of their heads. Now suddenly I go forward in right in front of the class and, I'm, and I think my classroom was like 50 students or 55 students. I'm look, suddenly looking at like 100 eyes looking at me, right? 55 pairs of eyes looking at me and the teacher is also there and everyone's looking at you. Right? Suddenly, it's it's no more just the teacher, you know, looking at you sometime, but it's everybody looking at you at the same time. And it's like I got very nervous, right? and the words, whatever I, it's, it's getting stuck here. It's not coming out, right? And suddenly, whatever I planned, whatever I thought, it just went disappeared. What do I say next? I didn't even make the attempt to write down, so I'm like totally lost. I quickly said a few things and wound up and realized that. The view is different. The perspective is different. And my own voice sounded very different. You know, I was not used to hearing myself speak for a long time. Like, and that long time was just five minutes. Right? So and I'm thinking, you know, hey, my voice sounds very different and, and all that. And so practice actually helps us to settle all these things. And we can even think, okay, how does it going to look like if I'm going to sit, stand in front of the class? How does it going to look like if I'm going to stand in front of the church? And, I, I, and it's good to help visualize it. Okay, this is how it's going to look. And I stand in front of the church. You're going to, you know, oh, this is the church. These are the people. This is going to look like this, right? It's fine. It's absolutely okay. Yeah, so many people are there. Whether it's few people or more people, it's fine. This is how it's going to look. Right? So you think about that. Don't let it take you by surprise. There could be some familiar people, unfamiliar people. There could be, you know, all that. You think about it. It helps you. Right? And practicing is also, you know, speaking it. You know, maybe initial days, you can actually speak it out. Speak out the message. You know, you prepare it. You, you preach it. Right? Uh, and see, okay, maybe you can time it. How long does it take? And so on. Uh, so... You can do that, right? So um, practice is also doing it publicly or preaching, speaking publicly over and over again. Now, that's the best practice, right? Uh, like they say, right? Swimming, you can learn in theory, right? You can, okay, this is how you get into the thing. This is how you put your head into the water. This is how you put your hand out and you push the water back and, you know, next hand in. But it is all the theory, right? I, I remember reading on swimming and you know going into the pool and I found that it is two different things. Right? I thought, okay, yeah, this is easy. I can breathe. I can blow out the water. I mean, air. And when I put my head into the water, and slide, suddenly I'm like drinking water. I'm just breathing. You know, everything is going in, and you know, all the chlorine is making my nose all burn and everything. And so, theory and practice are two different things, right? So, the more we do it, the more we you know, you know that God has called. The more opportunities you take up to actually preach or speak in public, that is enough practice, right? So we get better when we practice, when we train. Yeah. Uh, Pastor, sometimes like we prepared 
yeah and we are speaking so sometimes people are not responding at that time and we are just want to complete mm. uh, what we plan so in that case what we should do and like how we can control like speaking so much mm. and people are not listening but it not good it's i know i know yeah so it it happens right it happens all the time like sometimes uh, there are reasons why people don't you know maybe they are distracted they are thinking of some things maybe people are tired right so sometimes you maybe you're speaking for a half an hour 40 minutes and then they are tired you know and sometimes you can see people sleeping <laughs> right and uh, and the best part is after the message they come and shake hands and say good message but you know that <laughs> you know that half the time they they had their eyes closed so anyway so we have all kinds of people right so all kinds of responses from people some are angry maybe you know you're sharing something and it triggers something in them they're angry uh, and so all kind of so you be prepared for that you know you're going to have all these kinds of things happening so it is fine so if it's a thing of okay people are not re- listening people are maybe getting distracted or whatever you if it can if you can address it address it right so uh let's say people are tired maybe it's time to just stop wind up you know wind up quickly don't weary them even more because they're not going to the more time you spend at that you know if they are going to be like that frame of mind they're not going to receive it so it's a waste of time so, so you can you know just wind things up maybe sometimes you see that they are they are trying but they are you you know that they are not understanding right so that is also possible you said something is a very you know interested audience or uh, they have come to learn and or they come to you know they are interested in whatever you are sharing topic but you notice that they are not able to understand like you see it they not take you not able to take it and you see it in the expression so then we can change the approach and, and say, okay how can i explain this better have right? you asked a lot lot how can i exp- maybe i need to spend more time on this to explain it you know i've spoken a word i've said some sentence but it requires some more explanation i it requires maybe some examples from the word of god maybe it requires an example from you know practical life so we can you know so uh, so the one thing to understand is there could be many reasons why people are not interested or not able to take in you you need to discern what is it judge what is it what is it uh, that is causing the problem and address it um, yeah so that will help yeah but be aware of that you know um the thing is this yeah sometimes we are we we are more focused on what we want to share and how we are sharing it um and so we should not let this kind of change that you know sometimes we lose track of where was i you know uh, and then you know, we miss out on what we had to say so that is something that we that will come with time and skill but um that is something that we need to uh, not let go of even as we address these challenges right okay um yeah okay so there are many things like even in um you know there are public speaking uh let's say environments or clubs you know there is something called toast masters you know where where people actually um, learn public speaking and get better at it there are competitions and so there are, there are forums like this where we can actually uh, learn you know, learn and get better at public speaking right and there are a lot of um, a lot of content on youtube just to help us um in terms of uh, our body posture and gestures and so on um it will help us right to get better right so all of us you know all of us need to have uh, all of us can improve in our communication and when we learn some of these simple things uh, it will really make a big difference in our communication right okay okay the third thing is perseverance which means that yeah you might fail sometimes right i remember the first time my first attempt was a utter failure i didn't want to do it again i said no oh, this is not for me but then you get over it you get over the fear and sometimes you are compelled to do it you know there are these class presentations and everything you cannot just avoid it so that helps you so persevere which means do it you know go after it right uh, learn from what went wrong last time learn from okay what are the positive things what are the things that went bad and change it 
address it. You know, sometimes we use these, some of these words we use over and over again, like, you know, you know, um, like that, you know. And then um, sometimes we make some, maybe our gestures that can be distracting for the audience. Maybe we, we are walking very fast, you know, up and down, up and down. We keep walking. Maybe if we are fidgeting, you know, we put our hands in our pockets or we just, you know, doing that and, you know, we are making maybe making sure everything is okay you know and then people notice that you know and it's distracting for them so learn from all that um and then change it right okay so what will really help us um is in terms of practicing in terms of also improving is to plan have a simple structure to our message now you know when we look at the uh, mechanics of sermon construction. We looked at a whole lot of things, you know, title, introduction, and uh, you know the transition and all that. All that is valid, but we could have a simple construction, simple outline, or a simple way structure for the whole message. You know, first thing, introduction. Right? What are we going to say? Tell them what you are going to tell them. Okay, this is it. We are today. We are going to look at this particular topic. So, what are we going to so you just tell them what you are going to talk about introduction right? so we can do it in se several ways right we, we of course we thank people and all that is part of it but in essence this is what you said what it is you're going to tell them what we're going to do maybe it's a three-day meeting you're going to tell them this is what we're going to look at today this is what we're going to study by the end of three days right you that's an introduction and then comes the body of the message where we're going to talk about what the title is, you know, actual content of it. Now that could be, you know, it depends. It could be a long study. It could be, you know. So, in fact, if you if you think about it, to speak in a very short time, and right, if if you are given like ten minutes or fifteen minutes, it's more difficult than if you are given like half an hour. Right? Why? Because you have only ten minutes. And you have to make it very clear and crisp and concise, which means you need to completely understand what is it that you want to share. You need to be clear, right? Because in 10 minutes, if you are not clear, you're not going to be speaking clear things, right? So you need to be clear. So body of the thing can have, okay, these are the ideas. These are the seven things. These are the six things I want to talk about. And why do you want to talk about it? Because it's all going to contribute to the main topic, main title that you are addressing. Right. So be clear. Then the conclusion. So conclusion. You know, tell them what you have told them. So that's the conclusion. That's a summary. You know, hey, this is what we studied today. We studied about this one, two, and three. This is we studied about how to plan a simple structure. We studied about how can we, how we can be confident, how we need to practice. That is what we looked at. So that is the conclusion. Right. So if we can keep these three things in our mind, introduction, the body of the message, the conclusion of the message. And if we can, in our preparation, if we can, or in, in our speaking, in our mind, it's clear. Okay, now I've gone past the introduction. Now I'm transitioning into the main body of the message. Okay, I've addressed that. Now it's time to conclude. So I'm going to tell them what we have already looked at in conclusion. Right? And, and of course, we looked at how ministry time and etc. Yeah. You know. Uh, pastors sometimes like uh, when pastors are preaching on a stage so some pastor used to speak very loud and mm. uh, very fast so uh, uh, i want to ask like what is the good way to speak in front like uh, some people used to very slow mm. and some people are very fast and uh, like what is the good way to yeah. when we are yeah so stage? yeah so what you are asking about what should be the rate of speech Right, rate of speech, how many words per minute or something like that. But so it, it depends, it varies, right? So if you're talking too slow, people will sleep. Right? If you're talking very slow, uh, you know, I'm I thank you, I'm here. And if and the, if all 20 minutes, if you're going to be speaking like that, uh, it's going to tire people out or they're going to lose interest. On the other hand, like you said, if you're going to be speaking rapid, fast, like when fast train, right? People are not going to follow. What did he say? What did he say just now? So it has to be an optimum level of or rate of speech that people can understand, right? Um, 
like some people are they are naturally fast speakers right they just rapid fire everything that they ask it's like fast some people think and they're very slow and you you are like hey, speak fast man and you are almost finishing the sentence right every time so when they ask something you know what they're going to ask you know the end of the thing you only say it because they are taking it time you know so we are temperamentally we are like that naturally we are like that but we need to change when we understand that i have a tendency to speak fast then you slow down and when you say okay i have a tendency to be very slow and saying i need to be faster right you make that change so what is the thing optimum level of you know rate of speech that we need to figure out you know I, there is a science to it they say okay this is so many this is a speech this is the so many words of uh, words per minute or something that you can speak you know that just people it's easier for people to understand and so on so all that is there but then you you practice in such a way that it's a it's a it's normal for you right it's normal for it becomes normal for you and when are those moments when you can slow down right when you slow down you're giving weightage and importance to certain things right you're saying you you maybe you're making a point you're talking about something very important and something that is serious you can slow down maybe something you know you just want to mention and move on right it's not something that you want to really dwell on um, you know even welcoming people and all that you know you you don't want to just take too much time with that so you mention that and you go on right so you can actually vary even in a message you can vary the rate of speech accordingly and and see where you need to be slow where you need to be fast right so so that's the thing right yeah, so i think gertrude wanted to ask a question yes uh, gertrude yes pastor you know my problem is in the church when it's a small hall they put the volume so high mm. and on top of that the pastor will uh, ask to increase they think by speaking very loud that uh, whatever they say it will go but uh, how to request them to reduce the volume first yeah yeah there again that also has a you know there's a scientific thing there's a medical thing also like yeah um you know that's i think it has to be optimum thing for a human being uh, i think about 60 db to about 80 db or 75 db <clears throat> decibels and beyond that uh, actually it's not like sustained hearing loud volumes you know that's why even when we use our earphones we need to be careful sustained listening to loud volumes can result in impairment of hearing and all that right so yeah so this is this is a problem this is a challenge because we we think that more volume more power <laughs> right more yeah. volume more more presence etc <laughs> already uh, deaf in one ear first oh yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> okay that's a challenge that's a real challenge we can request them you know and there are actually apps uh, which you can download on your phone um there's an app by i think it's by bosch um which you download on your phone and which you uses your mic and all that which which actually tracks the volume and we did that right because when somebody come yeah we did that in church we said okay uh, when people said hey it, it's it's really loud or it's really soft we we did that we checked it and then we found that yes i know if the volume levels are this we need to change it we need to bring it down so make sure that so the sound engineer actually checks it just plays it at the loudest and checks and says okay does it go beyond whatever 80 db or 85 db because and and concerts they play at you know 85 db and sometimes more and, yeah um, yeah so you you cannot be there for a long time and um, so so this is something that we can Uh, you know if you are the speaker you be mindful of it and uh, if you know if your if others are there we can request them we can talk okay, to them yeah. yeah and then tell them about this you know the scientific thing beyond it be behind it uh, so that it can be because when, when it's at a good volume it's such a it's so pleasant to receive it yeah, yeah right? to listen otherwise yeah. you know they think by more volume you know the more power of the mm. word uh, the word power is not in the volume but it is how the speaker or the pastor presents the, itself you yeah, know the content yes the truth yeah, content, so yeah. so um, so i've been in church services where certain churches they actually give ear plugs see it's not like um, so it's it's actually a, it's it's a medical 
issue also like some people uh, the, for them the balance in the brain uh, and i don't know how to, the technical term for it uh, when it's uh, it's like they are getting receiving too much input you know they can hear a lot of things ambient noise everything it's yeah. in the ear in a ear they're receiving everything so for them uh, it's it's important that they actually use earplugs or you know something to reduce that level right so yeah, good uh, idea, yeah so that's a good thing so you can just use some earplugs earplug, that you get from yeah. the medical shop which looks you know which, which is very small and you can put it in and um, so that can be a thing um, so i know of churches who actually you know just before you enter they they, they place it there you know, if you want you can actually use it because it's going to be loud so that's something to do you know if you've spoken to them and they're not listening use earplugs yeah thank you pastor okay right okay so um so it's also pu public speaking is we, we realize that when we when we do that when we when we speak and it's a, it's a pleasurable experience right so it, we have one, one one thing is okay you you realize that okay you're being it's a privilege to be used by god it's a it's a great responsibility and you see that yes you know i'm able to share and and i'm able to you know do this and so it's something good you you experience and you feel uh, and you feel the pleasure of god when you're actually ministering you know that's the that's the greatest thing right you the assurance of god the conviction the the because the holy spirit is also you know affirming certain things to you attesting certain things in your heart so confirming certain things so it's a it's a it's a pleasurable thing right when it comes to uh, public speaking um did anyone uh, put their hands up or, or somebody wants to join the class okay um so it, it's it's a you know it, it's it's a pleasurable thing as well right it delights us to do that uh, it may we may not start off by doing that you know we may start off by feeling very nervous and maybe even hurt hating every experience of it but as we get used to it right when you know that okay you're not you know to be honest i never wanted to speak in public or sing in public or anything i was you know all the times terrified uh, all the time also you know this whole expectation of how it will be received you know that kind of a thing but then all that changed when you all the changes when you're not conscious of yourself right when you're not self conscious when everything all thoughts are not revolving around you but your outward focus now you know you're looking at okay how can how can you know god help uh, the folks who are listening and you know what is it you know this is eternal truth the god's word and and I, i'm just excited that oh this is going to make a difference in people's lives so you you know you you share with expectations so all that changes you know changes us and it makes the speaking or uh, the whole experience of preaching and communicating um, in this, in our context you know god's word a pleasurable thing right and it's not something that you it's not a pain point but it's a pleasurable thing yes we will always experience some kind of nervousness right uh, at the beginning but then we will get over it right okay so in terms of personality okay now when it comes to personality what are we talking about we are talking about who we are as a person you know temperamentally how we are um now some of us could be very serious some of us could be very funny some of us could be very analytical right and all that comes out or is expressed in our speaking right you just think about it when you get to know people you talk to them they talk to you and then you say oh this is this is the kind of person he or she is you know you are get to understand the person how because they spoke because of their actions because of their words you had conversations then you understood um they shared about their life and even in their sharing you understood you you realize oh this is how the person is the more time you spend the more words you you know heard them speak about themselves about everything you understand a whole lot about them about their personality you know what they like what they don't like all that so your personality will come through in your speaking okay so sometimes we think okay oh it should not you know uh well god i should i should decrease you should increase yes right we definitely want more of god to be on display and all of god to be on display but the way god has designed 
whole preaching is that you know that like he told jeremiah i put my words where in your mouth okay so it's your mouth it's yours it's your heart it's your mind and like jeremiah you know, each of us is very unique each of us unique experience unique life journey everything so when the lord puts his word in our hearts and our mouths and when we speak it out it comes with our you know it 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 comes with a mix of who we are right when we look at paul preaching when you listen to some of when you read through some of the epistles paul's personality comes through he reveals it right he says you know i i came to you in fear and trembling and then you know he says i was you know uh, uh, with um you know when when he talks about in second corinthians 11 he talks about you know all the um uh, i forget whether it's 11 or not but yeah i think it's 10 or 11 where he talks about all the hardships that he went through and shipwreck and all that so you understand you know? and he also talks about um the, the great love that he has for the church for the church of the believers then you understand a lot about him so it comes through in our speaking okay now there's nothing wrong as long as that is the highlight if that is going to be the highlight of the message you know, what i did and what you know what i experienced and if that is going to be the highlight of it without whatever whatever you we have experienced or gone through pointing to jesus or pointing to christ that is a problem right so it's a, we we testify right we share a testimony if the whole testimony is going to be like you know i me myself i me the saying and then there's no mention of how that drew you to god or how you know god was glorified in this and how he is true to his word then it becomes a problem right but our testimony is important and it in fact we are testifying when we preach right so um so let it be authentic let it be real okay your personality will come through so don't try to be someone else don't try to be you know i want to be like that preacher or i want to sound like that preacher i want to be like that and right? you be yourself right there's nothing wrong from learning from you know all the great preachers or all the great teachers how do they share about their life and about their ministry yes we can actually adapt some of these things but if you got you have your own unique style and god has given you your own you know identity in christ so go with that right um uh, don't change that because you'll try to be you'll try to put on uh like someone else someone else's style someone else's accent you know sometimes we, people do that right put on an accent and suddenly that accent will go off and suddenly you realize oh you know in certain words in some, some, some you know you can't put on a mask all the time the mask will fall so you be unique like you be comfortable in your own skin right okay um i think this we looked at the seventh one about visualizing about projecting okay this is in page uh, what page are we looking at page 45 right um visualize project right um go confidently right yes you are going with humility we sometimes we we mistake humility or god confidence uh we, we there's a there's a confusion about that right when you walk confidently and yet in humility uh that is the opposite of arrogance right confidence is not the opposite of is not equal to arrogance or pride right? to be confident in what you want to share to be bold in what courageous in what you're sharing that is not arrogance arrogance and pride is a lot to do with the self a lot to do with the flesh right so when you're comfortable when you're confident in what god has given you what god has done for you and you're bold and courageous that that gives us a lot of confidence and we need to use that and we need to walk in that right um and what will really help us is you know if you go there and if you start the message if you got start to share start confidently start boldly you know sometimes people say you no know, you know i didn't prepare too much or i'm not an very experienced speaker or you know they're making all these experience ex excuses for what they are not don't do that 
right you know uh, this is my first time so please excuse me if i make mistake you know i'm not uh, sure of the language please please excuse me don't don't say anything see all the flaws or limitations people will see it anyway why do you want to draw attention to it why do you want to advertise it right you don't have to because people will know when they see it sometimes people won't even notice it but you are calling attention to it i'm sorry i have a cold i have a cough uh, excuse me you know don't even just start confidently and speak confidently right it's okay it's you it's you, the message that god has given you you just go start boldly start you know with a bold in the sense uh, maybe maybe with a bold voice you know welcome everyone you know be cheerful be joyful and say hey hello everyone good morning uh, so glad to be here sometimes you don't feel like it you're nervous inside right oh i don't know i wish someone else would speak but then you go do it anyway right you just say you know this is it god has given me god is with me so go with that confidence okay uh, be passionate about what you're speaking oh this is very important first of all are you bored by the message that you're sharing are you convinced about the truth of what you're sharing that will make it passionate but people can experience or or people uh, not experience but people can actually um see or they can ex uh, maybe we can say experience the fact that you are interested people will know that you are passionate about a subject or you are bored about a subject right for example you know you you enjoyed a fantastic meal you had some great biryani and the way you speak about it people will know people will even taste that biryani you know, the way you explain it brother you know what like for example we went to this missions con missions uh, trip and we had this wonderful biryani at lunch you know i hadn't had breakfast and i was hungry also and this maharashtrian biryani is brilliant right and you when i talk about it you know it had this masala and it had a layer of masala and rice and meat and all that you can almost visualize it right <laughs> and if i you know keep going and i say it was steaming hot rice and long grain basmati rice and and you just mix it and you can almost taste it <laughs> why because you know you you are excited you are interested you are excited so you know if anywhere in the message you are not excited about something you are not convinced about something it will come through people can see people can feel that hey this person is not is not very sure is not very interested is not convinced about it right but whereas this whole path, you you can be passionate about it if you are convicted if you are convinced if you are in, interested in it and that will come through that will come through in your speaking that will come through in your body language everything right so okay so uh, two more things uh, quickly you know so when we reflect when we learn when we receive feedback uh, and make co corrections that is when we make progress right? progress in our the speaking journey in our preaching journey that is when we make progress right so don't be afraid of feedback see the thing is after you've spoken you are most vulnerable the minute you come back come down and from the stage or from the from you know from the mic you just hand it over and and somebody says to you hey what did you speak why did you say that how will you feel you know, you you feel very hurt upset right so the thing is there some people will say that you know some people will say that was great some people will say that was boring yeah why did you you know i didn't understand certain things people will say that but you welcome it i right? don't take it personal right if there is any truth you know some people will say things just to hurt you right maybe that's their revenge they taking revenge on you they're saying oh you know you have to you know you have to do better why did you talk like that why did you speak that and all that so if there is any truth to it one percent truth you know in all that they said take it take the truth take it as a feedback look at it objectively hey can i change that is that truth to it let me change don't get defensive right so just receive it thank you thank you for your feedback you don't have to say oh is it really oh you know brother, i'm so sorry you know no problem you just say oh, oh yeah. you know many times i just say that we give feedback and say hey thank you i appreciate it thank you for your feedback uh, i'll work on it right so 
so you take the feedback reflect think about it you also think about it okay actually after you know after you preach a message you think about it god would have spoken to you even during the message these are some things that you could have not said not says that and in the message you realize here are some things that the holy spirit was emphasizing that he's emphasizing you because you feel that yeah god is doing something and you know this is something that he's emphasizing highlighting he wants people to hear that you know it and some things you know you say, oh that was a work of the flesh you know i just got carried away and i said it and I, maybe i should not have you know uh, things like that uh, that joke that was in poor taste i should not have said that and maybe you know so next time you avoid it right so we make progress and um, it just enables us to keep going on okay so when we put these things together when we do this then we we refine we come we become confident uh, we are perfecting our skills right we are perfecting our abilities we are refining our abilities and it uh, you know moves us on con continuously on to uh, make better progress right so these are some simple steps to public speaking okay so there are some more things that we're going to look at some practical things we will uh, address it in our next class okay so we'll stop here and uh, we'll come back uh, next class so next class friday's class online students uh, we are not here uh, since we are on the missions uh, conference so um, friday's class uh, will most likely to be canceled or if there's a video we will i'll upload it and um, and i'll just inform notify right so so i just wanted to give a heads up uh, about friday's class right okay thank you so much god bless bye bye